There goes a hole in the bottom of our tank. I hope it's in the right place. Me too. We're going to pick up our yurt and it's going to be a process. We're glad you could join us today for our ongoing projects here in Vermont. If you watched us begin work on the water tank burial project, then you've met the homemade ramrod that Charles built to shove sand under the grooves in the cisterns. That tool has been amputated to fit in the narrow gaps between the tanks, but it has served its purpose well. We do wonder exactly how professional crews might achieve a similar effect more quickly. So if you happen to know the answer, please share it in the comments. In total, it took us around seven or eight hours across a couple of mornings to get all three tanks tucked in. That includes the filling and tamping of the two support columns in the middle of each cistern. Now that they are situated, Charles will work on the plumbing and insulation. Then we need to get them completely underground. On some days, our new life feels like a permanent vacation, and on other days, it feels more exhausting than our old life. So we were excited to take a small, real vacation, meeting up with family for a few days at a campground in southern Maine. Of course, we considered taking the RV, but for such a short trip, we decided to leave it behind this time. After a nice change of pace, a few too many ice cream cones, and some glimpses of the ocean, we've returned home and we're ready to get back to work. There's installation instructions. a hole in the bottom of our tank. I hope it's in the right place. Me too. So there seems to be quite the debate on the internet about whether to lubricate these gaskets or not. A lot of people say do not lubricate them. Other people say use a silicone lubricant. And which are you going to do, Charles? I don't know. Think about it a little bit. Lefty tidy. 
This first tank will be our input tank where the rainwater will go in and it'll also basically be our filter tank because any small debris that actually gets into this tank will either settle to the bottom or float to the top and it'll form a biofilm and actually be like a filter tank and then the water will flow out of this tank anything that floats will never get out of this tank um, then it'll flow out of this tank out the other end and into that one and then out of this one at the other end and into the other end of that one by the time it gets to the third tank which is where we'll draw our water from the water will probably be crystal clear and clean even before filtering it in the earth. It's the middle of July now, and this ghost pipe came out of the ground after last night's rain. It's a flowering plant, but not a bit of it is green. That's because it's parasitic, getting its nutrition from the roots of nearby trees. And, speaking of trees, some of the ones that were stripped by spongy moth caterpillars are getting new leaves. They look a bit more awkward now than they did in the early spring but it's nice to see signs of life. As for the caterpillars themselves, the ones that survived are moths now, and Raven can't get enough of them. Raven will have to content herself with living cat toys on the other side of the screen though, because our cats are not allowed outdoors. Good morning! Today is a special day. We're going to pick up our yurt and it's going to be a process. It's going to be uh, quite a process. We've got to go pick up a tractor and drive it back here and then we've got to take three trips. So it's waiting for us at a freight center and we'll bring you along for the ride. We are very grateful to our local friend John for the use of his tractor for unloading the pieces of our yurt, and also for the flatbed trailer we have been borrowing for some weeks now. Getting the tractor home from his place was a bit of a project, though, as the distance is about 10 miles and the average speed was barely more than 10 miles per hour. Then, finally, it was time to start picking up our 10 crates in three trips to the freight center, about 20 miles away. The first load was the hardest one to handle, with eight separate packages, and five of those were over 15 feet long.
It wasn't easy to find a convenient flat space to lay the crates down in our hillside clearing, and it was a stressful thing to maneuver the tractor in a tight space with our future home dangling on the forks. But the process went relatively smoothly, and we are looking forward to the day when we can open the crates and set it all up. Well, we left at 8 a.m. to go get the tractor, and it's now 4.30, so... And we've got everything here. So the round part is the kana, which is the lattice walls, the vertical frame of the yurt. And underneath that, we have the rafters and the rafter supports next to it. These packages are said to be water resistant, but not waterproof. So we are going to tarp the whole thing. Here we have the vinyl roof and the vinyl exterior walls. So there's a kind of standard front door and uh, the clear dome at the top that will be like a skylight. Before we can do that, we need to build the yurt platform, starting with 25 piers that will be secured to the bedrock underneath. The other urgent project, of course, is getting the rainwater collection cisterns insulated and buried underground. Unfortunately, we decided the borrowed tractor would not be very helpful for moving our mound of sand on this steep terrain, so it looks like we will have a lot of shovel work ahead. Charles finished the last bits of painting on the shed this morning. Now if we could get ourselves some wood chips to flatten this ground out and make it easier to walk on, then we'd be in business. I'm starting to get these tanks plumbed in, getting the uh, flexible fittings put on. What are you doing, dog? You look stuck. It's a good thing you have a hand. <laughs> 